we want to honor the name of the Lord that reigns over us. He reigns in power and majesty and dominion forever. And we want to declare it all across the world, all across the globe. Thank you, Bishop Murphy, as we declare it. Our God reigns. Hallelujah. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Yes. Our God reigns. Lord, you reign above. Above every name. Say it again. My God reigns. My God reigns. Our God reigns. Yes. Our God reigns. Lord, you reign above every name. Above every name. With power and majesty. With power and majesty. Dominion. Dominion. Authority. You reign. You got it. Say it again. With power and majesty. With power and majesty, dominion, dominion, authority, you reign. It's an easy praise, I promise. Let's go. Say it again. Oh, my God reigns. My God reigns. Our God reigns. Yes. Our God reigns. Lord, you reign. Above every name. Above every name. Say it again. My God reigns. My God reigns. Our God reigns. Yes. Our God reigns. Lord, you reign. Above every name. Above every name. With power and majesty, with power and majesty, dominion, dominion, authority, you reign. That's the reigning God we praise, and for the victory we honor Him. Come on. With power and majesty, dominion, dominion, authority, you reign. Come on, let's go high, everybody. Oh, my God reigns. My God reigns. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Lord, you reign above every name. Say it again, my God reigns. My God reigns. Our God reigns, yes. Our God reigns. Lord, you reign. Above every name. Above every name. With power and majesty. With power and majesty. Dominion. Dominion, authority. You reign. You reign. You got it. I hear you all across the globe. Power and majesty. With power and majesty. Dominion. Dominion, authority. You reign. This is a church song. We gotta keep going higher. Oh, my God reigns. My God reigns. Our God reigns. Yeah. Our God reigns. Lord, you reign. Above every name. Above every name. Say it again. My God reigns. My God reigns. Our God reigns. Yeah. Our God reigns. Lord, you reign. Above. Above every name. All of my circumstances. All of my circumstances. Give it to Hallelujah, over my circumstances, over my circumstances, giving me, giving me another chance to reign. Say it again, say it again, over my circumstances, over my circumstances, here we go. giving me another chance. Come on, clap your hands, all you people, shout to God with the voice of triumph. He's the reigning God, he's the strong God, and we give him praise. Yes, God, you reign. Come on, let's sing it together. Yeah, you reign, you reign, you reign, you reign, yes, you reign, you reign, you Look at a situation and speak to it and tell the Lord to reign over it. Ask of every deliberately. You reign, you reign. Say, 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 say it again. Yes, God. You reign. you reign, you reign. There's nobody like him in all the earth. He has power and majesty you and dominion, both now and forever. You reign, you reign, you reign. You reign. One more time, everybody. You reign, you reign, you reign, you reign, you reign. You're for reigning over you. Thank you for reigning over you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank God for our praise and worship team leading us to the throne of grace and uh, thank all of you for coming back. Hope you've had a great summer and we're resuming our Bible studies now on Tuesday night. I'm so grateful for 
the many of you who always make sure that when we come back, you're always with us and uh, you join us. And I'm thankful and grateful and I give God praise that I, I, I pastor a church of people who take their responsibilities and their role in, in Bible study seriously. And so um, I'm eternally thankful and grateful. And I just want to take a moment and uh, give God praise and thanks for you being with us uh, back tonight. So uh, we're going to spend the day dealing with and talking about um, voting, actually. So uh, I think um, it's critical that all believers and all people who care anything about your community, care anything about um, our lives, that you take seriously the role and responsibility of casting your vote. Don't let anybody tell you that your voice and your vote doesn't matter. That's not true. So I'm going to take a moment and pray. And then I'm going to introduce some guests that we have tonight that are going to enlighten us. And certainly uh, I've been enlightened, challenged, and encouraged. And I'm, I'm going to spend just a moment praying for them. And then I'm going to introduce uh, our first guest. We have two guests tonight that are going to share with us tonight. Uh, and they're not really guests. They both are members of the First Baptist Church of Glen Arden, of which I'm very grateful for. But uh, let's, uh, let's start by praying, first of all. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the wonderful privilege that you give to us to come before you and to uh, be able to uh, dive into uh, understanding our responsibilities as citizens of this country. And so, Father, I pray that you lead and guide us. I pray for your anointing upon our facilitators today, our guests. Use them in a supernatural way, God, to uh, simply make an impact on the lives of every member of the First Baptist Church of Glenarden. Thank you. We love you. We bless you. And we give you the glory and the honor. Put a hedge of protection around us and allow uh, your truth to prevail and help us to get your heart in these matters. In the precious name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. All right. So I want to introduce to you all uh, attorney Barbara Arnwine. I hope, I hope I'm pronouncing her name right. Esquire. She's the president and founder of the Transformative Justice Coalition. That's a internationally renowned organization for contributions on critical justice issues including the passage of the Landmark Civil Rights Act of 1991 and the 2006 reauthorization of provisions of the Voting Rights Act. Currently, she serves as the co-chair and facilitator of the National Commission of Voter, for Voter, Voter Justice and, and the Millennial Votes Matters Convenings and the Voter Voting Rights Alliance. Boy, that's a mouthful, all of that. She's heavily involved. And uh, for years, she's been a part of our congregation, and I've known, uh, since I've known her, how committed she is to helping our community and our people understand uh, what our responsibilities are, but even also understand what our challenges are. And uh, I've invited her to come tonight and share with us. Uh, she has, she's internationally known. This woman has had an impact uh, across this nation and uh, around the world. And uh, she's a, uh, she's, she was a, uh, uh, she's, a, she's been an instructor at the Columbia University School of Law. Uh, she has done so much in this arena. This, her, her resume and her bio on all that she's done is significant and great. And it's an honor for us to have her. And uh, I want to introduce attorney Barbara Arnwine uh, to come and share with you. Welcome, Barbara. We're glad to have you. Thank you so much, Pastor Jenkins, and good evening to everyone. What an honor it is to be able to speak to everyone tonight about voting safely in the election 2020. You have heard repeatedly that this is the most important election of some people's lifetimes. Well, we are here to say today that your vote counts it only counts, though, if you vote. And you can help so many others also vote. So we're going to talk about that tonight. I am so honored to be uh, one of your presenters, along with Reverend Thea Wilson, who will be uh, introduced later. So first of all, let's talk about a, the history of the fight for voting rights. 
to this month is called Voting Rights Month. And it's Voting Rights Month because every September 1st through October the 6th, which is the birthday of the mighty Fannie Lou Hamer. When you sing this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, she made that song popular as she fought for the right to vote. She was a sharecropper evicted from her uh, plantation because she started telling people they needed to register to vote. And you see on that picture, John Lewis, Congressman John Lewis, who of course, you know, fought so much for the right to vote and died recently. But his spirit lives on and his legacy is in all of us as we fight for the right to vote. So we're gonna talk about what we can do, how we got to where we are, and why it's so important that everyone, everyone, everyone sees themselves as a voting rights champion, not just the people who are empowered to do that. Um, this is the voting, oops. This is the voting rights circle. Now the circle is showing you, I know you're saying I can't read all that and it's not meant because this is a circle I use to teach. It takes me six courses to two hour courses to get through this circle. But all I wanna say today is that from the time Africans arrived in the United States as enslaved persons, as early as 1600s, we can find cases where blacks fought for the right to vote. Because even though they may have come here in chains, they were creative, they were smart, they were amazing, our ancestors did so much amazing work, and many of them were freed early, and they wanted to vote. They wanted to be full citizens of their new colonies at that time. This is pre the creation of the United States. And but they were denied the right to vote. And this is just a circle of all the cases that we've gone through, all the fights. But I want to you know, talk about the fact that we fought for the right to vote. We didn't just give it up. We didn't just, so nobody just granted it to us. We fought repeatedly for this right to vote. And this night right to vote always was met by voter denial and voter suppression. And you heard about Reconstruction, the Civil Rights, uh, the Civil War, and you're gonna hear more about that today. But all I want to make the point of is that we've gone from that beginning of the fight, from the first step of a black person on the uh, United States colonial uh, structure to the day. And sadly, if you notice the vote, the circle goes from vote denial back to vote denial. So how do we get there? So I'm gonna talk about that real quick. As I said, we fought for the right to vote. People forget about the thousands, the hundreds of thousands, 200,000 black soldiers who fought during the Civil War. And what people also don't know, you know, you hear about the Radical Reconstruction Congress and uh, President uh, Lincoln's party and how they quote free, how Lincoln freed the slaves and the rest of it. But what they don't tell you is once the Civil War was over, the question was, what do black soldiers do? Because remember, they had no plantations to go back to. They were freed people, but they had no property. So a lot of the white soldiers went home, but the black soldiers stayed in the Union Army, and they said to Congress, pass the 13th Amendment to get rid of and abolish slavery forever. Pass the 14th Amendment so that you set forth the equal protection of the laws, the privileges and immunities clause, and citizenship requirements passed the 14th Amendment, but most urgently, they said, passed the 15th Amendment, which is the right to vote, and it's no accident that the 15th Amendment was the hardest amendment to get to, that it was the last of the Reconstruction constitutional amendments that restructured our nation because of the fact that there was not only resistance in the South, in the old unreconstructed South at that time, but there was also resistance in the North 
uh, by Republicans also to the notion of African men and having the right to vote. But, the, but fortunately, the, okay, uh, not working. Let's see if we can help you out. Okay, here we go. All right. Fortunately, the uh, 15th Amendment was passed and African Americans, uh, men, uh, got the right to vote. Uh, and you see here um, one of the first um, African men, American men, uh, casting their ballots. And people weren't happy about that. The, and one group of people who were really unhappy about it were white women. Uh, because women had been saying, we have the right to vote, and we should have it. And black women agreed. One of the lost pieces of history is the fight by black women for the passage of the 19th Amendment. You're hearing a lot about the 19th Amendment this year because it's the 100th anniversary of the suffrage move, uh, amendment of the 19th Amendment that gave women the right to vote. But people don't know that black women were at the leadership of that fight. And that black women political clubs that came up immediately in the aftermath of the Civil War uh, were so powerful, thousands upon thousands of black women, uh, you know, 14,000 showed up you know, for various you know, events and fought for that right. And one of the people who showed up was Nanny Helen Burroughs. And when you drive past the school, when you drive past uh, on the boulevard named in her honor, she was one of the big African-American women suffragists. And here you see a slide with her surrounded by so many other powerful black women. There was one problem with the passage of the 19th Amendment, and that is that black women ultimately, who fought so hard for it, were not given the fruits of their labor. People like Maggie Lena Walker uh, you know, was fabulous in fighting for uh, voting rights for all women. And she helped to register hundreds of women in Virginia. She was one of the first black women to run for statewide office uh, in the United States. Uh, she ran for Secretary of State on an all black political party ticket. Uh, and However, black women who fought for this 19th Amendment saw themselves excluded because of the racial codes and the Jim Crow laws. And literally, from 1901, when George White leaves the US Congress, and he says famously to the world, as he's the last black after Reconstruction when we had 16 blacks in Congress, when we had a thousand black elected officials in the South. Congress, we had people who were senators, we had people who were lieutenant governors, but they were all wiped out after the 1877 hayes tilden Compromise, which removed the federal troops from the South. And when they did that, all of a sudden, blacks lost their right to vote because of voter suppression. So he testifies to Congress in 1901, and he says to the Congress that like the phoenix, I prophesize that like the phoenix, the African American will rise again. He said the Negro will rise again and will become again members of this great body. Uh-oh. OK? It's OK? Mm -hmm. All right. And he. Because of that prediction, one thing I would like you to know is he was from the state of North Carolina. It would take North Carolina 91 years before they would elect another African American to Congress. 91 years because of voter suppression. Literacy tests, you've heard about them. Uh, you know, the jars and the, uh, how many uh, uh, rocks how many grains of rice do you see in this big old jar? Uh, how, what did that have to do with literacy? They had you know, all these uh, grandfather clauses. If your dad had voted, your grandfather had voted, then you could vote. Well, you know that blacks were excluded, so that meant all whites. We had all these 
really evil laws that were used to keep blacks, but let's be very clear that it also was a whole lot of violence, ugly, vicious violence in Wilmington where they slaughtered African Americans, Okachee massacre in Florida where they killed 54 blacks for voting. All of these things, when you go to the EJI memorial, the lynching memorial, half of the people on there are lynched because they tried to vote. So let's remember that there was a lot of blood shed because we were determined to have our rights and the vote is precious. And nothing was more precious to us than the passage of the Voting Rights Act of 1965. And that did not happen by accident. It happened because black people gave their lives, gave their blood. Jimmy Lee Jackson massacred, I mean, shot and killed in uh, Marion County uh, right before this, which led actually to the Selma March. And we know the story of the Selma March across that bridge, across that Edmund Pettus Bridge where John Lewis and 600 people were beaten savagely because they wanted what? To vote. Where Reverend C.T. Vivian was beaten the week before in Selma for trying to register 100 blacks to vote. We know this fight and Fannie Lee Hamer who mightily fought for the right to vote, died way too young because of being beaten repeatedly for fighting for the right to vote by police officers and by jail, uh, uh, jailers. And, and so we know this fight and we have to never forget it because that's part of the heart of who we are as a people and who we are as a nation all people that we, that, so the 1965 Voting Rights Act is so critical. In the three years after the passage of the 1965 Voting Rights Act, states like Alabama, states like Mississippi, that had one to 3% of blacks actually uh, registered to vote prior to the Voting Rights Act, within three years, those states go from one to five percent to 65 and 70 percent of blacks being registered. So it's amazing power. We go from 1,000 blacks uh, in elected office to, to 12,000. All of these marvelous revolutionary changes happen because of the Voting Rights Act. But we are in a new era now. We are in a new modern era of voter suppression. And it's being driven by the demographics, our democracy, because of the changing racial demographics, we have seen a resurgence of white supremacy. And what has happened in that white supremacy is a demand for fewer people to vote and to block African Americans from voting. Um, in 2011, I created this map of shame. And it was created because in 2010, 25 million people who voted for President Barack Obama did not turn out, did not vote in 2010 for the midterm election. Consequently, 30 state legislatures became solidly a one party and they immediately started passing voter restriction laws, voter suppression laws. By the time from January 1, 2011 to April when I create the map of shame, 40 states have over 100 voter suppression laws that have been introduced. That is how rapidly and crazily people move to destroy the black vote. But we were lucky because we still had the Voting Rights Act in full force. But then came 2013, and in 2013 was the Shelby case, and the Shelby case resulted in the gutting of what's called the coverage formula. Because what the Voting Rights Act did that was unique was that it said that if you were a jurisdiction with a history of racial discrimination in voting, then you were going to be held accountable for any law, 
practice or procedure that you instituted to make sure before it could go into effect, before it could be actualized, that it would not have a racially discriminatory impact. Today, because of that, we are confronting a current climate of 61 forms of voter suppression. I didn't say one. I didn't say two, folks. Did you see what I just said, 61 forms of voter suppression? I wrote this in November, before COVID, before the new viral voter suppression age that we're seeing. So I want people to understand that this fight that Fannie Lou Hamer and so many people gave their lives for, everything they had for, that now it's under attack through voter suppression. Um, so as I mentioned, we are now voting in the era of virus voting. Oh my goodness. And we got virus voter suppression. So due to the COVID-19 shutdowns, voter registration is down throughout the country. Uh, and that's one thing all of us can do to change real rapidly. We can tell everybody we know, register to vote. And guess what? They can do it online as fast. And uh, Reverend Wilson's going to tell you more about how you do that. But you can do that. We can change that around. States are actively exploiting COVID-19 to increase voter um, suppression by saying that what? What are they doing, people? You've seen it. They are saying that they're not going to allow people to be mailed a ballot uh, to vote um, by mail in some of the states. For those of us here in Maryland, uh, those of us in DC, it's a different universe uh, because in Maryland, you can apply to get a vote by mail. In Washington, DC, they're sending you these ballots, right? But let's be very clear that in a lot of states, they are fighting to this day about drop boxes, just a case today. Two cases today, one in Pennsylvania that said, yes, we can have drop boxes all over the state. One in Ohio, where the court said just today, said we can have more than one drop box per county uh, so that people can drop those ballots off instead of having to put them in the mail. We've seen the attack on the Postal Service. We've seen all of these problems. And we also know that drop that you know uh, vote by mail has its own internal problems because you have heard about signature match that they're blocking people's uh, ballots in North Carolina. They sent out 620,000 ballots two weeks ago, uh, and 10,000 have been returned. And of that, 10,000 uh, 2 percent have been rejected because they say your signature is not the same. Well, signatures change. Uh, but that's how voter suppression operates. It goes to a person's vulnerabilities and exploits them. Congress should pass new legislation, and we are saying pass the John Lewis Voting Rights Restoration Act. And we're saying pass it like ASAP. But don't ever forget that during this cycle, if you have problems voting, if you run into any of these kinds of problems that I mentioned, that you can use the election protection hotline. You can call 1-866-687-8683. Uh, I was blessed by God to have helped create the election protection hotline. And I thank God every day for keeping us. The um, other slides. Uh, we're going to talk about you know, your options to vote. You're going to hear more of that from Reverend Wilson. Uh, you're going to see that there are all kinds of ways. But don't forget, the most important message that I can give you tonight is that the fight for the vote was a fight. That you got to fight to make sure that that fight continues to be a reality by how you exercise your right to vote that you are a leader in this fight to vote, that you exercise your voter options. And those options are, first of all, vote early. Vote early. You'll hear more about that. Second of all, 
If you like to vote by mail, vote by mail. But make sure that you do it right. You're going to hear more about that. The third option is to vote. If you're voting in person, be safe. Uh, we will be at the polls all over the country uh, making sure people have masks and gloves and et cetera so that you will be able to vote safely. But we want to make sure that you vote early. Don't wait to the last minute, people. And the last one, of course, is that where they have curbside voting, drive up options like drop boxes, which Maryland will have, please use them. And Pastor, in concluding, I just want to thank you again. This has been an honor to have brought this message. Uh, there is so much to be said about this fight for the right to vote. So many people I wasn't able to give honor to, like Dr. Martin Luther King, uh, so many people like Reverend C.T. Vivian, Reverend uh, Joe Lowry, and so many women uh, like Amelia Boynton and Diane Nash and so many others. But I just call their names because the ancestors surround us every day and God gives us the blessings of their fight. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. God bless you. If I could just clap because that's walking history right there. And it's not only walking history, it's also someone who has been engaged in the battle and doing things behind the scenes that you never even know about to help make sure that our country lives true to what the Constitution and the pledge says, that we have justice for all. And I just want to thank her and let her know how proud I am of her work. And uh, even though she had to quickly go through so much in history, we're going to get an, have an opportunity after Reverend Wilson to ask questions of her. Uh, and I just want to just take a moment and salute her and thank her again for being with us tonight and for sharing. And, and I want you to get from this presentation that she gave tonight, I want you to understand that um, a lot of people gave up their lives and a lot of people worked hard for you to have the right to vote. And it would be a shame for you to not understand the privilege that we have. The, the honor that we have to be able to cast our vote. And it's important and critical. And uh, so the question is, how do you cast your vote? What's the process of doing that? Um, we recognize that uh, we're, in a, we're in a COVID-19 era, as uh, Barbara said, Sister Barbara said, we are in an uh, environment where we want you to be safe. So what we've decided to do uh, is uh, have one of our members who's, again, intricately involved in the voting uh, arena uh, politically to be able to come and tell us uh, how to do it, what to do, what not to do, what the drawbacks and dangers might be. And that is one of our, one of our own, again, Reverend Thea Wilson, who's one of our associate pastors here at First Baptist Church of Glenard, and her and her husband are deeply and heavily involved in our ministry here in various capacities. Um, they both have served in a number of areas of uh, ministry here, and I'm very proud to have them here at our, our ministry. But she is uh, married to Deacon uh, Ronald Wilson. They have three beautiful daughters. Uh, she is the director of our civic engagement ministry. That is the ministry that keeps us enlightened and aware of the issues that we're facing, both in terms of potential laws, and uh, they're helping us uh, uh, be engaged. And so she's an elected official. She's currently the chair of the uh, Anne Arundel County Democratic Central Committee and the chair of the Maryland Democratic Party's uh, African American Diversity Leadership Council. But she's not gonna be here tonight to talk about democratic matters. She's here to talk about voting. And uh, so what she says applies whether you are a Democrat or a Republican. And we want right. everybody to vote. We want everybody to cast their vote. So I'm welcoming her and thanking her again for her already service to our church, but she's going to come and educate us so that we know in this day and age. Matter of fact, I'm trying to urge everybody to do a mail-in vote. I'm not trying to go and stand in line for hours. Uh, and I want to encourage you to do that. I've already filed my application to get my ballot to vote by mail. And I want to encourage all of you to do the same thing. Amen. It's easy. It can be done in the safety of your home. It can be done early. So uh, I want to encourage you to do that. Um, that's what I did. That and my whole family. I've encouraged all of my whole family to do the same. And you're my family, and I want you to do the same thing, too. So let's welcome Reverend Thea Wilson. She's going to give us the ups and downs, the do's and don'ts. Reverend Wilson. God bless you, Pastor, and thank you. 
Hello, family. First Baptist Church of Glen Arden. It is wonderful to be in the worship center uh, after all these months um, to share with um, what Pastor said, one of the most important um, topics that's going on in our community, and that is how to vote. And now that we are experiencing a major pandemic, how to do so in a safe way. I also want to uh, recognize and give honor to Sister Arnwine for that phenomenal presentation on the history of our vote. We know how valuable, obviously, it is because people wouldn't be trying to suppress us from doing so if it was not valuable. So we must vote. Uh, it is our reasonable service, church family. We have to do it, and not just in this very important presidential election, but in all elections. Voting um, allows you the opportunity to cast your voice and your ideals and your opinions on leadership in your community. And so we want to make sure that you understand even next year there will be um, municipal elections for city leadership. And in 2022, very important uh, election in the midterms, which Sister Arnwine mentioned, uh, when uh, all those thousands of um, African Americans didn't show up to vote in the midterms after electing President Obama, what we got is him not having a Congress and a Senate to help support his policies. So it's very crucial that you just not show up this election. We want you to do that and to do so early, but we want you to show up in all elections. Uh, so, uh, but we also want to make sure that you are registered to vote because that's how you get started in, in voting. And we want to make sure that you tag and share uh, this particular um, broadcast and this presentation because I'm going to share with you um, how to do so in all 50 states, wherever you're watching from. Uh, if you are a U.S. citizen, uh, I'll be sharing with you how to register to vote and how to vote by mail. So please tag and share this um, very important presentation uh, with all of those members of your community. So how do you register to vote? Let's see. I'm used, not used to an iPad, but I'm getting there, okay? Uh, vote.org, www.vote.org is a one-stop shop um, website for all things voting. There are others, but this um, website, Barbara and I agree, uh, contains all of the information that you're going to need to vote and vote early. If you don't hear anything else we say tonight, we don't need to be Johnny Com lately and have CP time this time we're voting, okay? We want to do it as soon as we can early. And vote.org has information that um, will share the deadlines for voting. Uh, if you are living in the DMV, DC, Maryland, or Virginia, your deadline for registering is uh, by mail uh, is October 13th. We want to make sure that you get registered to vote now, actually, today, go on www.vote.org and make sure you are registered tonight. You can do so while we are presenting to you. And let me, let me yes. add, make sure we're clear, because your, your uh, Registering. slide said www.vote.org. Okay, it's yeah, www.vote.org. So it's not a dot in between. It's a dot, www.vote.org. Okay, put that extra dot in there. Okay, okay yes. two dots. Vote.org, sorry. www.vote.org dot 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 right. is the website. We're going to be referring to it all night long, okay? So thank you, Pastor. So we're going to register on www.vote.org and make sure you do so. Uh, and the deadline again in the DMV is October the 13th. This web, October the 13th. This website also will talk about um, the fact that you can, we don't want you to, but you can in DC and Maryland only, you can register in person at, on election day. In Virginia, you won't be able to do so. Uh, when should you register? Tonight. We don't want you to wait until election day to register because that's too late. 
However, if something comes up and you can't um, till then, you do have the option. This website will also talk about the rules for voting. Uh, the age you have to be to vote is generally 18. Some jurisdictions are younger, but mostly 18. Uh, it talks about being a citizen and whether or not you have been convicted of a felony. Uh, you too may be able to vote. This website will give you all that information. In Maryland, unless you have sold votes, uh, before and been convicted of that crime. Uh, you can vote if you have been convicted of a felony. It's important for you to know that. Um, if you have served your uh, sentence, you can vote. Um, and advocates have fought long and hard for you to have the right to vote. So we want you too to exercise uh, your right to vote. If you're a taxpaying citizen, you have the right to vote. Also, those of you who may be in the military watching, if you've never registered to vote, this website will address how you too, if you've been deployed, how you can get registered to vote, or if you are living abroad and you are a US citizen, you can find the information that you need on this website. One note that I want to, to make as far as registering to vote goes, uh, in the state of Maryland and the District of Columbia, uh, the primaries are closed. And what that means, if you register as an unaffiliated uh, uh, voter, which means you're not affiliated with either party, whether it is a Republican Party or the Democratic Party, uh, you cannot vote in a primary election if you register as an unaffiliated. And the importance of that is to understand it's generally in primaries, Pastor, where we determine who gets to run in the general. So you want to really think about where you live and the rules and regulations uh, for voting and uh, make a decision to align your um, registration to the party that aligns more closely with your values. So remember, in Maryland and D.C., Right now, today, they have closed primaries. Uh, and so you must be either registered to be a Republican or Democrat uh, to vote. We also now have a new uh, party in Maryland called Bread and Roses. So that's a new party. Uh, you can find out more information about that. Um, but I want you to make sure that you make a note of that. Now, we are dynamic disciples here at First Baptist Church of Glen Arden and very much aware and used to duplication. Um, and wouldn't it be great to find out if everyone in your cell phone, all the contacts in your cell phone is registered to vote? Uh, just like we duplicate ourselves with in salvation, we can dupl duplicate ourselves with registering to vote by downloading this particular app Outvote, and I want to thank Deaconess Denise Streeter for sharing this um, app with me uh, to tell me all about it. It's a great tool. Uh, whether you have an Apple or uh, an Android like I do, you can go to the Apple Store or the uh, Google Play to download this application. And we would like for you to use the code 456100 to do so. And when doing so, uh, you, it will tie you to the um, organization whenweallvote.org. It is a nonpartisan organization uh, that was launched with a mission to increase participation in this election, uh, co-chaired by former First Lady of the United States, uh, Michelle Obama and friends. And so uh, this is a great tool. You can, you can text your friends with a personal message uh, that's in this um, application. And you can really see which one of your friends actually does vote, Pastor. You can see who's a super voter. You can see those who aren't registered to vote or who have, are registered and have not voted. So you can kind of give a, a, a kind of push to your family and friends to say, come on and vote with me. Uh, so we encourage you to use this very valuable tool, not just registering, but you can also use this tool to encourage them to vote by mail as well. So now that we're registered to vote, so how are we going to obtain our mail-in ballot? Well, as Sister Arnwine told you, that if you live in the District of Columbia, 
You don't have to do anything but make sure that your address is correct with the Board of Elections in D.C. Uh, because they're going to be sending out a ballot the first week of October to you. So you don't have to um, fill out any applications that I'm going to talk about in a minute. You just have to make sure that if you've moved since the last election in 2018, you want to make sure that you change your address so the ballot can come to the correct address. Will you do that, District of Columbia residents? Make sure that you go and sh make sure that your address is correct in the voting system. Now, if you are a Marylander, all the Marylanders in the house say, ow, uh, <laughs> we uh, do not get a ballot mailed to us. And again, wherever you're watching in uh, the country, you can visit www.vote.org to find out how you can obtain your ballot. But I'm just highlighting our area here in our metropolitan area. Our governor decided that he wasn't going to mail us ballots, but what he was going to do, and some of you may have received one of these, he's going to be, he mailed applications instead. So you would get an application like this in the mail, and it is, we encourage you to fill it out now, immediately, and put it in the mail immediately to obtain your mail-in ballot. Do not wait. Or if you are a technical person. Slow down. Yes. Because this is important. It's important. Okay, so. I'm trying to stay with my time, bud. You're good, you're good. <laughs> okay. I, I have, I know, I know people in high places, so I can stretch oh, your time the a little bit. Praise the Lord. Praise God. So that's only an application to get the, yes. to get it. So this I, is I don't want people to think you fill that out, you voted. No. You have no. not voted. You have only applied, applied to get. to get a mail-in ballot. There you go. This be this clear. This is about an that. application. So let me be clear. In DC, the District of Columbia, Mayor Muriel Bowser and the council there decided they were sending the actual ballot for you to vote for president of the United States and any other elections going on in your ward in DC to your home. You want to make sure your address is correct in the District of Columbia. In the state of Maryland, Governor Larry Hogan decided he wasn't going to send a ballot like he did in primary. He was instead going to send the application for you to obtain what used to be called an absentee ballot. And they've, they're doing a lot of trickery with some of the names to confuse people. But this is absentee voting uh, that they are now tagging as mail-in voting. And this is an application that every Marylander uh, will receive if you um, were registered to vote. And this particular one is my daughter's, and I pulled it off the counter because we had, we're technical in our house a little bit, and we went to our cell phones and downloaded the application on our phones. And so I'm going to encourage you, if you have yet to apply to receive your mail-in ballot, please pull out your phones right now and text VBM, that's vote by mail or VBM, to 77788 right now. So text V as in vote, B as in buy, M as in mail to the number 77788. When you do that, the link to this same paper application will come to your phone and you can complete it on your phone, you will need your Maryland issued state ID to obtain the information. One thing I like about doing it online is that you'll get a confirmation that you have applied for it. Um, it gives you the option of receiving your ballot by mail or email, which I asked for because I didn't trust the US Postal Service. We're going a little bit about that because of what's been going on with the Postal Service. So I requested to receive my ballot via uh, electronically. So when they start mailing them out around the first of uh, the month of October, I can download my ballot. I'll be notified to do so. Or you can have it faxed to you. So you have choices. As I learned from uh, Sister Arnwine, uh, mail-in voting is not a panacea. It's not a one-stop shop. Um, there are choices uh, in our vote. So please utilize these tools. Tonight, family, 
We don't want to wait. Uh, and again, I want to repeat that in the state of Maryland, our ballots will be mailed to us three weeks prior to uh, the election, and they should be going out the first week starting October the 5th, around October the 5th. If you do not receive your ballot, this is the importance of voting early. This is why you want to call and find out where your ballot is. Now, if you are in Virginia, did Virginia pop up? Yeah, there it is. Virginia, Virginians, you're from, it's similar for you. You too want to request your mail-in ballot by going on to vote.org, um, www.vote.org, and click on Virginia and, and look for the vote by mail link and you will fill out the application there. And in Virginia, though, you must do this tonight as well, because they're going to start mailing ballots to you the latter part of September. And we're already in September. What is it, the 15th? So in a couple of weeks, they'll start mailing the actual ballots to you. So you, got it. you have work to do, Virginians, if you're watching, to get you this uh, mail-in ballot requested immediately. So what do you do now that you requested it? Once you receive your ballot, what do you do? First of all, you return it early. <laughs> I'm going to say that and be repetitious with that. You're going to return it early. And we prefer, um, all the organizations and around the country prefer for you to drop it at a ballot box um, or early voting center. Um, but if you choose to mail it, now this is what the law says. I'm going to go over what we suggest in a minute. The law says it must be postmarked or mailed by the 3rd of November on the election day. But family, I'm letting you know the 3rd of November is too late. Tell your neighbor who's ever next to you, that's too late. November 3rd is too late. However, the law does say it can be mailed up to November the 3rd. In Maryland, it's the same. Uh, but... See, here are some things that you need to be very cautious about. You have to read instructions on your ballot, uh, your ballots when they come to you. Because in wherever you live, the instructions can be different. And I want to highlight Maryland because we live in Maryland. Our church is housed in Maryland. In Maryland, you have to complete not only early, but in black ink. If you, you complete this ballot when it's sent to you in any other color, I know some of you purple lovers out there want like purple pens, okay? You can't use your purple pen, Pastor, on this uh, ballot. It must be black or they're going to toss it. It's going to be invalidated. So you want to make sure, invalid. So you want to make sure that you use black ink and that you hand deliver it to an early voting ballot box location. Uh, Virginia is the same, all of them must be postmarked by November. Now, this is what the law says. Now, let me go over what I'm suggesting to you uh, because we want to make sure that um, our voices are heard and there are no issues. And we, ha we have no need to call the Voter Rights Alliance because we're having issues at the ballot. You, you find yourself running into those issues, saints, when you do so late. When you do it early, you have time. So, again, I'm going to stress to read and follow the instructions carefully. Sit down at the table with your family and complete your ballots together. Make sure that you all understand the ballots and the, um, how it's to be completed. It's very important. Um, we're mostly, African Americans generally are not used to voting by mail. And so we, this is a different type of uh, voting concept for us. So it's important that we do it right. Uh, for instance, ask yourself, what color ink pen do I need? Uh, is there any voter ID required? Or even do I have to have it notarized? In some states, you have to have your ballot notarized. Uh, do I sign the actual envelope? or should I sign, or does it tell me to sign the ballot? Let me tell you about this. If you have to sign the uh, envelope and you have any other mark on your ballot, they're throwing it in the trash. 
So make sure, don't scratch on it to make sure your pen is writing. Don't put any marks on your ballot. Carefully fill out the bubbles completely like you're taking a standardized test for your candidate of choice uh, or your ballot measure, because in some of your cities and states, you are voting on not just the president, you have judge of the circuit court, you have uh, some ballot measure uh, question, perhaps, make sure you're filling it out um, completely. And again, I'm going to stress, I know you all are saying I'm saying this too much, but no, I'm not. Uh, mail it, if you're mailing it, it has to be done early. We're suggesting that you hand deliver to a ballot box. Go to www.vote.org and click on your state and find your polling location to where you can drop off your ballot. Most Local boards of elections will take your ballots, but you got to check with your local um, board of elections. If you are here in Maryland, my suggestion for you is October the 27th is your drop dead date to vote by handing your mail-in ballot to a ballot box. That's your drop date. That's the second day of early voting. After that, it's too late. And the reason being is you need time to track your ballot. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. But if you have to mail it and you don't have a way to get to the polling place, you must do so by October the 13th. If you've decided in your plan that you're going to get your ballot, fill it out early, and mail it, your drop dead date is October the 13th. Please make a note of this, Saints, and tell all your friends. All right, so again, have a plan, as I just said. Have a plan, because I want to highlight this, this mailing that was um, mailed to all of you across the country. And it was sent to us by the U.S. Postal Service. And it says, if you plan to vote by ma mail, plan ahead. I'm telling you to plan ahead. But the plan they have on here is not a one-size-fit-all. As a matter of fact, the plan they have on here, Pastor, is too late for us to vote. So we're saying throw it away. And I would rip this up if I didn't use it, need, to, need it for another presentation. So don't follow these dates. Throw this away, this, 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 this um, mailing, and, f and have your own plan by voting early. Go to, make sure you know where the drop boxes are in your particular location. Visit either the USA.gov elections office or www.vote.org for your polling locations. Because you need time to track before election day, Pastor. Don't forget to track your, pa your uh, ballot, Pastor. And you do so by visiting your local uh, your local boards of elections. In D.C., it's dcboe.org. Search for track bot ballot. In Maryland, it's www.elections.maryland.gov. And you search for track ballots. In Virginia, it is elections.virginia.gov. And it's the same. You search for track ballot, and all you do is put in your name. And you're tracking... You're tracking to make sure your ballot was received by your, the Board of Elections. Your actual vote. Your actual vote was counted. Okay. That's what you're... When you're tracking your ballot, you are tracking that your vote was counted, and you are looking for the site to say, received. All right. Outstanding. Okay. Um... Let me get Sister Barbara to come back because we have a ton of questions here. Oh, wow. Oh, good. Um, <laughs> Can I just say this? Can I just say this one thing? I know we, we're wrapping up. But if for those of you who choose to not vote by mail and you still want to go to the yes. polls, um, even though we expect polls to be packed and it's really not safe because of COVID, please make sure you bring a mask wear, um, and water because you're going to stand in line probably, hand sanitizer and the, and the like. And make sure you keep 866 our vote handy, um, as well as um, know the hours of your location. All right. 
You ladies have done a phenomenal <laughs> job. I'm very proud of you, I'm very thankful. And uh, the thing that's interesting about uh, this tonight is it's a constant stream through the whole presentation of questions. So Excellent. Normally, when uh, I do Bible study, you know, they, I might get a couple questions at the, you know, during it, but at the end they start coming in. Uh, but throughout the whole piece, they're asking questions, and some of the questions you've answered already. Okay. So I'm not going to repeat those questions. Okay. But let me go ahead and give you some of these other questions. Um, do you need to? F uh, no, wait, hold up. Let me start off with this. I was I am registered in Maryland under an old address. I am now a DC res resident. How do I change my location? Okay. You want to say you would need to go to? Um, you need to register in DC. Go to www.vote.org. Click on District of Columbia and register. And in the registration, it will ask, Are you are you a first time voter? You would say no. Um, and you explain, I've, I've moved, and um, just put your new address. Do you need to fill out that form if you filled out the information online? No. Okay. Can I request a ballot by mail, but physically take my completed ballot to the Board of Elections in Largo? Yes. Yes. You can go to Largo regardless of where you live? It's a local board of election for Prince George's County. Yeah, are they asking for Prince George's County? I don't, I don't okay. know where the person if lives. If you live in Prince George's County, you, go to Largo. And you can go to Largo to drop off your ballot. If you live in Prince George's County, your ballot, not just, and your application, for mail-in application, by the way. Okay. And, and that's um, you know, recommended, actually, uh, for people. The good news is that when we say vote early, we want people to just turn, make sure their ballot gets turned in. Mm -hmm. That's why we love drop boxes, but also that's why it's good to take it to the Board of Elections or to right. the polling sites mm -hmm. well, and drop them off. Just move over here two oh, or three okay. steps so that we can okay. get you. Okay, there you go. Very good. Excellent. Here, yeah. Here's a, oh, I'm so proud of this question here. Uh -uh. For those who are away in college, what are uh -huh. their options to vote? There are many. Um, first of all, you have a right to be registered uh, at your college mm -hmm. address or at the address where you live in the state to which you are attending college. And if that's where you're going to be voting, that's where you want to be registered. If you're going to be home and vote and you know, are doing this remote online mm -hmm. uh, course taking and you can register at home uh, and vote there. But you have to choose one, and you need to make sure that you register in time and all the other laws apply to you. Be very careful. There's a real effort in this country to suppress the vote of college students. Uh, so there's a lot of bad information that gets out there every election cycle. Believe me that if you're a college student, you want to do the following. If you're on campus, one thing you want to be talking to your administration about in the Board of Elections right now is to have an on-site polling, on-campus polling site, so that you can just vote right there at your, uh, if you want to vote in person. If you're voting by mail, we talked about that. It's the same rules as for everybody else. But don't let anybody tell you that because you are a college student that you can't vote in your state. Of course you can. Excellent. And the other thing I wanted to say about vote.org, five minutes. It takes less than five minutes to register to vote. Less than five minutes, people. This is not a 30 minute process. Right. It's five minutes. Great. If you filled out the application to vote by mail and you do not receive your ballot by election day, can you then go to the poll to vote or will they say you can't because you submitted a request for a mail-in ballot? You can go to the poll to, uh, which camera am I looking at? I'm just sorry, which one? Look at this one here. <laughs> this one. Uh, you can go to the polls to vote, but you will be voting provisionally because they probably will see that you requested a ballot um, and they have to verify that you didn't receive it. So you'll get a ballot at your polling location. You'll fill it out just like you would if you normally would vote in person and it will be uh, provisional. 
And it varies again mm -hmm. from state to state. Right. There are 50 states also. with different laws and different rules because we know people are watching from all over the country. Right. Uh, when you go, they're going to say, we sent you a ballot. Uh, if you have that ballot, bring it with you. So, because people do that all the time. Uh, they bring their mail-in ballots and they just turn them in there and, um, because they, and they want to vote in person. That you can do. The other thing you should always say to the registrar, I mean to the poll worker, is to cancel your ballot. In some states that's all they need to do and you can vote a regular ballot. They just cancel it out. Cancel your so mail-in ballot. They, right. uh -huh, mail -in they ballot. cancel your mail-in mail -in ballot. ballot. Right. They just cancel it out. So it never can be counted from that point on. Do not listen to what your president told you. Do not vote twice, people. Right. Please, you vote once. If you vote by mail, if you mail that ballot and it's gone and you think it's been received and you've tracked it and see that it's been received, then stay home on election day or go help somebody to vote. Yeah. Excellent. All right, can people in other states Text VBM seven 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 eight eight. That's just for Maryland. That's just, that's for, just Maryland. for Maryland. Okay. Maryland. Okay, that's yes. Maryland only. Maryland only. Okay, is there any specific impact to individuals that have PO boxes as opposed to a specific address? Anything special they need to be aware of if they use a PO box and not a resident residential that I don't address? Know. And and it varies again on st by state. Uh, there's some states where that's where people receive their ballots. It's at a P.O. box, but there's other states where they don't allow like it. that, where they don't allow it. So usually you want a residence, uh, a residential address uh, where you can rely on mail being delivered and being um, you know, received. Because remember, one of the problems is that they update the registration rolls. And when they update the registration rolls, if they put something in the P.O. box and you didn't see it or treated it like junk mail, sometimes that will in result in your being on an inactive list. You never want to be on an inactive list. Uh, and because that means that you will never be mailed a ballot. You're going to always have the vote in person. You're going to, but you just want to make sure you got, what did you say, Reverend Wilson? The right address. Yes. That's the most important thing uh, for everything when it comes to voting. And early, because if you're, <laughs> if you're requesting all this early, then if you requested your ballot and you know it's being, in Maryland, if you, it's being mailed out the first week of October and you don't get it, you can call the Board of Elections and have time. And this is one of the reasons I like to have it um, downloadable, um, request it so you can download it. So you'll never have that problem of never receiving your ballot. Yes. yes. Okay. Um, are there any organizations or groups available to assist seniors who may need assistance? Yes. Depends on what kind of yeah. assistance are they saying they need. Now that question I don't know. Okay. To, but yeah. uh, I tell you what. Um, yes. This is what I'll say about this. We are really um, trying to push our seniors to vote by mail and have family members assist them in doing so because we know that it's going to be very strained at the polls for our seniors. And um, that's the plan of action. But unless you have a specific yes. organization, because um, all the organizations I know is pushing vote by mail for, for right. everybody, but mainly seniors. So another yeah. person asked the question, if you, let's say in a family, Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. gather everybody's yes. mail-in box. Can one person go in yes. and drop multiple? In Maryland, yes. In Maryland, okay. Maryland's very unique. Now, other states... You got to check. You really got to check because it's illegal in other states. Yeah, you have to check In the some rules. other states, it's illegal. It, that's, that's why I gave all the bullets on www.vote.org because you want to verify the rules for where you live. They change even across the line from D.C. to the Commonwealth. Mm -hmm. So and, make sure you know. And back to that question on assistance, 
There are organizations that are out there assisting voters. I know that they're in Baltimore and other places. You can call us again at the 866-R-VOTE hotline, and we'll tell you where those organizations are. Because remember, in Maryland, you are allowed to receive assistance to fill out your ballot. In fact, there's a form mm -hmm. that has to be signed by the person who assists you. Right. And indeed, in Baltimore County, I know because I had clients who I was working with, uh, you were able, they had people who were couriers who brought ballots to people, waited, received, uh, answered their questions, signed, signed that phone, for, uh, form, and took the ballot back to the BOE, mm -hmm. the Board of Elections, for them. So that's a great thing about Maryland. Maryland right. has made it very easy in that regard. Excellent. Okay. Um, I have more questions, but we need to bring this Wrap to a conclusion. Up. So yeah, let, me, let me ask a very important question. Can we put this power, these PowerPoint presentations on our website and people can download them? Is that okay? I'm please, that. please, okay. I would love it. All right. And Pastor, the other thing we're doing at my organization, Transformative Justice Coalition, we're creating a, uh, what we call videos because people need to understand how to do some of this, mm -hmm. how to vote by mail. We're gonna walk people through you know, completing your ballots, showing people how to do it. So we're gonna have that for many of the states. Uh, we have 22 target states, so we're gonna do that. Plus, uh, we're gonna march people to, to the, the polls. polls with a motorcade uh, so that you can turn those ballots in. Uh, because we want people to really be motivated, galvanized, see this as something worthwhile to, you know, really celebrate that we can vote yeah. and that we have power in our vote power. What is your, what is your website? It's votingrightsalliance.org. Votingrightsalliance.org. We already have a lot of great information up. Okay. And we encourage people to go there. Okay. I want to thank these ladies, y'all. You know, if we if we were in church, I'd tell them to show y'all some love. Uh, and I, I'll show I, her love. <laughs> no, no, no. We're, we're, it's I'm, been I'm a pleasure. Eternal grateful. This is this thank is you. very important. It's very important. Uh, you know what? There's the website right there. Yeah. Get a shot, a close up of this real quick. Uh, there's both uh, uh, Sister Barbara's. Yes. Uh, um, website and First Baptist's email address uh, for our civic engagement ministry. Right. So make note of that. And these, these slides will be, this, this PowerPoint, uh, keynote is actually what it is, will be on uh, our website tomorrow. You can download it tomorrow, okay? Thank these ladies so much. I'm Thank so you. grateful. This is, this is so important. I know somebody can say, that wasn't Bible study. Yes, it is. It's, oh, yeah. <laughs> we're teaching you how Absolutely. to be engaged uh, in changing our world. And that's yes. what we're trying to do. We're trying to get you to be obedient to the laws of the land. Mm -hmm. And uh, so don't think that we've forsaken anything. We're doing exactly what the Bible instructs us to do. And I want to thank all of you. So listen, I'm going to show you news and I'll be back to pray with you in just a moment. So uh, stick with us. We'll be done in just a couple of minutes. All right. God bless. This is FBCG News, your source for the latest news and information at First Baptist Church of Glen Arden, where we're developing dynamic disciples. Do you know what God loves? He loves a woman who will pursue Him by any means necessary. These are difficult days we're in. The world is shifting daily, but your emotions don't have to be tossed and turned by it. This year's virtual He Loves Me Women's Conference will help you connect with God and truly understand the depth of His love for you through master classes, general sessions, and virtual worship services. The conference will also feature live chats and speakers, on-demand learning modules, and opportunities to fellowship with other women. Be inspired by dynamic guest speakers and artists who will empower you to relentlessly chase after God, such as trauma therapist and life coach, Dr. Anita Phillips, world-renowned preacher, teacher, and counselor, co-pastor Susie Owens, national gospel recording artist Gay Arbuckle, and just added, Grammy award-winning musician, songwriter, and author, Kirk Franklin. Now is the perfect time to become the relentless woman that Christ has called you to be. 
Ladies, join us October 2nd and 3rd for the virtual He Loves Me Women's Conference. Visit fbcglenarden.org slash he loves me to register. The current edition of Vision Magazine is now available on the church website. This digital church-wide publication keeps the congregation connected and informed about different activities and events occurring at First Baptist. It is also a resource to share testimonies and spotlight outstanding service from members. View the newest issue today at fbcglenarden.org slash publications. That's the news for this week. You can find more details about these and other events at fbcglenarden.org. All right, make note of those announcements. Very excited about the Women's Conference coming up. Please, ladies, ladies, register for that, okay? One last thing I want to tell you. Uh, I'm not sh I, I'm, I'm, I think I may have said this before, but I want to say it again, how important it is for you to complete the census. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, uh, here's a quick slide that I want to show you real quick, and it, it's very critical that all of us fill out the census. It determines the resources that are available for our community. There's no personal information asked. Then nobody's going to track you down and come and do anything to you. It just counts you, and everybody needs to be counted. All right? Let me take a moment and pray for you all. Thank you for joining me. I'm so proud of you all. I'm so grateful to pass to the First Baptist Church of Glen Arden. It's my deep joy and pleasure to be your pastor and for our guest to be your uh, for some of you say, yeah, I'm your internet pastor or your radio pastor or just to have your support with us each, each time we come together. And uh, how much I miss our church meeting together, I miss it immensely. I'm looking forward to the time we'll be able to come back together and celebrate. Oh, we're going to have a time when that comes. Mm -hmm. So, but thank you for joining us tonight. Father, I pray for the people of God. I pray for our nation. I pray, Father, for the the, that you would rebuke the division and the separation that occurs in this country, that you would allow your spirit to just uh, invade the country and take over our hearts and minds and put us on one accord, Lord. Let no, let, don't let the enemy succeed in bringing about a division in our country. Help us to be united and let the name of the Lord Jesus be exalted and lifted up and let him be glorified. I thank you. Praise you ahead of time, God. We pray for our leaders in this country. We pray for in every branch from the federal government to the state to the county and city. We pray for all leaders and political leaders in this country that they, God, would do what's right, that they would make choices and decisions that would be to the benefit of the people that they serve. I thank you for hearing my prayer today, and I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, everybody. I'll see you Sunday or next Tuesday. God bless you.